because for those of you who uh, don't know, I can tell you that Mike Spittle and I worked together for several years at the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. So I appreciate very much having the opportunity to have been introduced by him. I am thrilled to be here, and it is indeed is a pleasure for me to moderate this session. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Riley and the Office of Behavioral and Social Sciences staff for um, inviting me to participate in this um, wonderful 20-year anniversary celebration. Uh, for those of you who have just heard, I've been here at NIH until uh, about two weeks ago uh, for almost 30 years, uh, a wonderful opportunity to grow and, and learn here. And I'm thinking more and more as I, I have listened uh, uh, over the next last hour that I've been here, that uh, OBSSR and Deepa Pakipsky and the staff that put this all together really had their act together because to have me speak right after Dr. Norm Anderson's video was just perfect because uh, I was on the search committee for, for Dr. Anderson as he became the first inaugural uh, director of OBSSR. So I'm thrilled to be here and it's, a, it's quite an honor. Uh, one of the things that Dr. Ali asked me to, to mention as I introduce this session on um, healthier societies and longer lives, and I've, for my own benefit, I've asked, uh, I've added more productive lives, perhaps, as part of this session. But uh, to say a few words about how um, the institute uh, that I left as uh, the interim director a couple of weeks ago, having served for 14 months as the interim director of the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities, for me to say a few words about how the relationships uh, between OBSSR and NIMHD uh, had been established and what we were doing collaboratively um, on our research in our research portfolio. For those of you who don't know, uh, when the NIMHD was established as an institute in 2010, uh, one of the charter requirements was that we have an ad hoc or ex officio, actually, member of our council from OBSSR. So Dr. Riley has been filling in and sitting in as the ex officio member of our council. So NIMHD and OBSSR has a really, really strong tie. One of the things that I wanted to mention as relates to um, the NIMHD and our portfolio and the role that we've had with OBSSR is the fact that uh, it was really OBSSR in the early days, even before we began having lots of discussion around health disparities and minority health, to assure all of us at the NIH about the importance of population health, population health in general. And it's from that, I think, early um, agenda that OBSSR put in place that those of us in the minority health and health disparities arena began thinking about not only populations that we serve, that are disproportionately impacted by poor health and, and poor health outcomes, but also to look at who should be added to these populations as our mission grew and as we became uh, much more uh, in tune to what health disparities really are. And one of the things that we did over the last 14 months at NIMHD has, to put, has been to put in place a visioning uh, process in which we really are trying to define minority health and health disparities. And working with OBSSR, we've come upon the idea that not only can we define these two areas, but we can expand them a bit to include populations that uh, not only will enrich uh, the whole field of health disparities research, but we'll be able to get a better sense of how we can improve the health of our nation. For those of you who listen to the news this morning, you've already heard about our minority populations and how they're changing and how the demographics of our populations really are changing and will be changing over the next 10 to 20 years. One of the things that's really unique about what we do at NIMHD is the, the thought that we recognized early on that there were po populations that were disproportionately impacted by poor health and poor health outcomes. We're talking about racial ethnic groups, immigrants. We're talking about those with disabilities. Uh, gender differences as it relates to the LGBT community. We're very, very interested in even populations that are socioeconomically deprived. And then, of course, we've got the rural community as well as the urban community. There are many communities in the urban part of the, of, of the country that people don't think about them as being disproportionately impacted by poor health and poor health outcomes, but indeed they are. So as we began thinking about this, we said, well, you know, uh, it is interesting to think that this country is so unique in its diversity 
and that diversity is really our greatest asset, but yet diversity provides us our greatest challenges when it comes to health and health status because of the profound uh, health disparities that we see. So one of the things that we've been able to do with the help of OBSSR is really to expand our portfolio beyond the biological uh, consequences that are associated with health disparities and to have led actually with OBSSR and the other institutes this thought that it's not just the biological issues that we should be focusing on, but it's the non-biological as well. So we've actually moved from just thinking about social determinants of health to talk about specifically health determinants, which allows us to not only look at the biological determinants, but also the social determinants. It's also quite fortuitous, I think, that uh, Bill and, and, and Jim and, and the staff invited uh, so many of the institute directors to serve to moderate uh, these sessions because I think it does speak to the fact that the institute directors that have been involved in this uh, symposium are the ones who really have been actively engaged in, in research focusing on the social and behavioral aspects. So it gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce the speakers uh, for this session. And I must say that I know them uh, uh, I know their work uh, very, very uh, well. And uh, Dr. David Williams, who is our first speaker, you heard me just mention uh, the aspect of NIMHD's new role in defining um, a vision for health disparities research. Uh, Dr. Williams has been actively involved in helping us with this vision and pursuing the vision. As you know, he is um, a, a professor, a long-standing professor at Harvard University in the School of Public Health who has worked in the health disparities arena for years. And he's been the one who's really tested our, our thinking because he's not only included the aspects of the social and behavioral and the biological issues as part of his research agenda, but brought in some of the areas in which we oftentimes don't want to talk about, issues of culture, issues of discrimination, and issues of health equity. I think he will really spark our appetite today as he speaks uh, to these issues, and particularly as it relates to um, the African American and some of the other uh, minority community communities that we, we serve here at the NIMHD. Our second speaker, I don't know her personally, but I know her research. And I should also add that uh, Dr. Williams is a friend of, of NIH because he's fun well funded by uh, many of the institutes and has been uh, funded by the Cancer Institute as well as NIMHD over the years. Uh, when it comes to uh, Dr. Julie Manella, who is our second speaker, uh, she is no, no stranger to NIH as well, and she was actually a, a very strong investigator at the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development, where I spent 18 years of my, of my career. Uh, she was one of our portfolio uh, scientists with a real uh, strong focus on child development, but with the perspective of how does uh, what a child experience early in life, uh, how does that translate to uh, his or her uh, health and wellness later in life? So we really are excited about having two very, very well-connected uh, speakers as it relates to the NIH community, but also two speakers who I think can really bring to bear this idea of how we can have healthier societies and also longer lives for our citizens as well as more productive lives. So please join me in welcoming them. And I think one of the things that I, I like for us to do first, I'll ask Dr. Williams to speak first and then we'll take a few questions and then we'll ask Dr. Manella to speak and we'll take a few questions. And I think the exciting part of this session is that their work is so interrelated that we'll probably be able to get some very good discussion going. So thank you, Bill. Congratulations to you and, and Jim and the OBSSR staff. And I do hope, as others have mentioned, that we have 20 more years of really exciting work around the areas of social and behavioral sciences. So Dr. Williams, will you join us? <laughs> 